communicate back out some messages also. So you say basically we have to be discerning. Yes, cognitive mm. all the time of your environment, mm. of, of your audience, yes. of the message. Are the people receiving? Because uh, sometimes you're sending, you know, you're preaching and they're just throwing up that word. Mm. They're just not getting it. And you can wow. see it. And she'll be like, did you see, you know? Mm. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, yeah, you know, they put they. They were just throwing it up. It just was not, you know, they couldn't digest it. Or sometimes you feel that pull and the people are hungry and you're feeling that pull, that they're pulling on your word, you know, and you're pouring out and you're feeling that tug and that pull. So the people are hungry. And when you get to that point, it's, it's awesome. It you know, it's it so awesome. So just being cognitive of that, you're a sender and a receiver of messages at the same time. You know, that's good. It's kind of shocking when you get to that you know, so. Apostle, I have one question. This yes, go ahead. A, Apostle, now, okay, now God has given you a word uh-huh. of correction. Like you said, we have to be in a place of in love. But how about if God, if you know God is giving you a word to release? So do you still have to be con, um, discerning in, re- in regards to who's receiving, who's not receiving? Or so you, or you should you just be in a place of releasing what God is putting your heart to release? I mean, all of that is dependent on, um, you know, what type of environment you're in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If you are if you're in the type of environment where you're you're gonna be able to get feedback, I mean everybody's gonna give you feedback some kind of way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But it just it depends on the type of environment that you're in. Um that's like a whole public speaking class. But like say for instance if you're trying to communicate a message yes. in that way and you're preaching, mm-hmm. um There's always there's still always a way to say what needs to be said. You know, I think there are two things that come into play. Number one, when those leaders ask a certain person to come in, okay. they're looking for something specific. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I think that everybody is a specialist in their field. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I go to the foot doctor if something's wrong with my foot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I go to um, a neurologist mm-hmm. if I need, you know, if I'm having head trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that certain leaders call in certain people at certain times because they're looking for you know, something specific because that person is a specialist in that area. They know what to expect Mm -hmm. from them. So they're expecting them to come in and do the work that they have been, you know, assigned to do and commissioned for that particular task. I mean, that's how I think. I don't know if everybody thinks like that. You know, Apostle Jackson is online. She can actually speak to that as well, I'm sure, if if, if that's correct. You know what I'm saying? That's how I think. If somebody's coming in, if we're mm-hmm. inviting somebody to church, mm-hmm. they're coming in for a specific reason. Mm-hmm. They are a specialist in something. Gotcha. Right. And so yes. there is a specific reason yes. that that invitation has been sent. Not even if we're planning a revival for whatever, whatever, okay. you know what I'm saying? There's a speci- there's something that needs to be communicated. Mm-hmm. And even That's if good. I don't say yeah. to them, I'm sure that because of the specialists that they are, their field, yes, their yes. expertise in ministry, yes. their mantle, their yes. anointing, yes. they're going to come in and do that. Okay. So that's that's my thought. Okay. Can, just one thing. Yes. I'm sorry. When I think about Ezekiel, Ezekiel, God told Ezekiel, I'm going to send you to a people. They're not going to receive you. They're not going to hear you. So that's why I'm, I'm just really listening to what mm-hmm. you're saying, because mm-hmm. even though he knew when he was going to speak to these individuals that there wasn't going to be in a receiving mode. There was going to be interference. Right. There was going to be them decoding and just rejecting the word completely. So God will send you in that type of environment. He will. But always remember, even in the midst of that, there's always a remnant, even in the midst of that. Because God never leaves himself without a witness. This is like something altogether different. But he never leaves himself without a witness. And so there's always a remnant, even in the midst of the people that don't want to hear. Somebody does want to hear. You know what I'm saying? And so even if you go someplace, (laughs) even if I go to somebody's church, Mm -hmm. I'm not there for everybody. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. So if so they good. have an ear to hear, they'll hear. If they don't, because okay. the mailman comes to deliver the mail. If your name ain't on the letter, it's not for you. Okay. I mean, that's the way it usually goes. Okay. Apostle, did you want to add to that? Um, I was just thinking that you know you have to be able to gauge the atmosphere. The word I would use is gauge. Mm-hmm. So even when you're communicating one on one with people, you still have to be able to gauge. Yes. You know how the conversation is going, so that you know what words, directions 
to use in communicating, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, you have to be able to, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, I find that people filter from their past mm -hmm. how they see in their present. That's right. And mm -hmm. that's because at the bottom line, there are places in their heart and in their spirits that they have not been healed from. They have not surrendered. Mm -hmm. And so, when you do that, you're always going to have these walls up. Mm -hmm. you always, and it's not that way with every person. Right. Either. There are some people, I've, I've had this said to me before, you know, you receive well from other people, but you don't receive well from me. Well, the reason is because I have walls up when it comes to you because what you have yeah. communicated to me in my past That's has so made good. me defensive right. about what you say right. is truth, honesty, and care. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put where with the other people, I let the walls down because they have not communicated right. to me that there was a need for me to protect myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so that and that and that goes back to what we said earlier okay. that decoding messages based on past experiences. Okay. And so we have to be sure that even when we sit down to talk to others, that we're mindful of that because you could probably have nothing to do with whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? In their past or whatever has gone on in their past, but it's a trigger. It's a switch. You know what I'm saying? You sound like you remind me of, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. And that happened to me when I first got married, you know, because my one of my sisters was very mean to me and always just did all kinds of mean, brothers and sisters. That's what they do when they're growing up. You know what I'm saying? And so even as an adult, when I first got married, I would boo-hoo and I would sob because there was things that my husband would say to me that would just like triggers I would immediately in my mind it would remind me of stuff that my sister had done you know so I had to get delivered so that I would still be able to function you know what I'm saying and so when you get to the place where you understand those kind of things you know then you could be more aware of how you receive how you don't receive you know all those things of that nature and so even with that as a leader you want to make sure that you're not serving somebody else that it's important so that when good. you're when you're communicating with them, when you're counseling, when you're giving advice, when you're training, when, whatever it is that you're doing, that you're not serving them that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they won't be able right. to receive. They're already dealing with their own interference. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But when you bring yours yes. and add that to it, mm -hmm. that's not helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Not all. all right. So <laughs> number two, after you receive the answer to a question, do you lose interest in the conversation? Can anybody talk to you for any length of time without you? <laughs> you ever see sometimes on the cartoons and somebody hit their head and the birds start flying around? <laughs> yeah. I would just read that. <laughs> that kind of thing. We we do that sometimes, right? Yes. yes. Okay, I got I I really am not a phone person. I don't like talking on the telephone. I'll talk on the phone if I have to. Okay. I have one particular individual and it's one of my spiritual sons and he will call me. He lives in another state and he will call me and he will keep me on the phone for two hours. Son, I can't sit on the phone for two hours. What do what do you do that you can sit on the phone for two hours? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I love him, but my God, he can talk. <laughs> so if he calls me and I'm answering the phone, I got to make sure that I have absolutely nothing else to do. <laughs> because three quarters of that conversation is going to be, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. You know what I'm saying? Because he likes two and three hours. I remember one time, and it was so bad, he even Facebooked it because wow. it was so bad. Wow. He was on the phone talking, and I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, bless him. Is he listening? <laughs> no, he's not on the line. He's not on the line. He fell asleep. No. And when I realized it, it was the next day. Oh, my God. And when I woke up, I said, oh, my God. I fell asleep. <laughs> And I woke up to a Facebook post. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's bad when your mom falls asleep on you while you talk to your mom. Oh my god. And I was like, I called now. I actually had to call back to apologize. And I said, What's the last thing that we said? He said, <laughs> He made a snore noise. I felt so. So know your limits. Know, know your limits. Be honest with yourself. And not to my son. I just can't. I, I don't have the longevity for the telephone. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. normally it's in the evening. Most mm. people who know when I can talk is usually in the evening, oh, like late, because that's when I'm settling in, you know. But that particular day, it was a long day. Yeah. Something happened, and I fell asleep. Wow. Wow. That was hard, but I felt so bad. <laughs> he was. I don't know what he was saying. I didn't even dream about it. But he said something. He said something. Number three, do you have the tendency to daydream at a meeting or during a lecture? Mm. That's communication. Do you ever finish other people's statements in order mm. to save time? Yes. Now, and that's actually that's rude. Wow. Yeah. That, that's rude on, to that's do good. that while people are talking. Wow. That shows that you wow. have absolutely no regard for other people. Wow. But if you have something to say, you want people to listen yeah. to you, yeah. that's unkind. Mm. And we have to remember not to do that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or you know, to interrupt conversation. Wow. Or, you know, Ooh. now sometimes people have finished my statements because I stutter sometimes. I'm not offended by that because I need help. <laughs> and sometimes I just cannot get my words out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the, 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 what, the car? What, the hat? The window? Just go through the list. No, I can't get it out. You know what I'm saying? Not that kind of stuff, but like, you know, people have a conversation with you and rushing you through conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what you were just saying, that right there, we got to be mindful of that. We got to be mindful not to do that to other people because if you have something that's important to you, you want to make sure that somebody is giving you their undivided attention. Yeah. And likewise, you should be able to do the same for others. Amen? Amen. 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 Number five, do you feel uncomfortable as Asking someone to repeat a set of directions or instructions. So sometimes if you don't get it the first time, ask. What is that that you said? Can you say that one more time? You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes maybe you're multitasking and you missed what somebody was saying because you were doing something else. Stop what you're doing and ask them. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Because you want to make sure that whatever the set of instructions are, that you get it correct. You know what I'm saying? And you want to make sure you're able to follow it properly. Okay? Yeah. yeah. They speak in bondage. Oh, so slow down. See, language. that's rude. Speak, speak my language, but I can understand what you're saying. To you. yeah. But because but that's the thing. If that, mm -mm. if somebody's come to you to communicate, and that's the way they talk, your job because you're gonna have people come to church that's mm -hmm. flat out mm -hmm. ghetto. I'm on a fire screen, that's true. And you can't tell them oh, stop and speak my oh, language. Yeah. No, you're the leader. You need to speak yeah. their language. You have to find out how to communicate with them to bring them from where they are to where you are. The weight of the responsibility is on us. The weight of the responsibility is on us as leaders to ensure that we do our roles. And I'm not saying somebody's coming to you saying, you know, speaking pig Latin and then you're just like. <laughs> you know, so, okay, let me get this straight. What you say? Right. Repeat it back to them. So right. Say what, yes, that's what I said. Or right. No, that's that's not what I'm saying. Right. Okay. So help okay, me understand well, what you're saying. Exactly. Let yes. me know what you're saying so we can get a resolution or whatever. Right. Is. Exactly. Exactly. Because the weight is on your shoulders. Right. And if they perceive that you feel that you're better than them because they don't speak like you, or if they feel that you perceive that, you know what I'm saying, I really don't have time for this nonsense. I wish you'd just speak English. You know what I'm saying? And and usually for some people that's in the world, that's their mentality. Yeah. They have a whole picture of what they think the church mm -hmm. is. So for us to be patient in our communication with them, that's going to help bring them closer to Christ. Can I go back to what you said about mm -hmm. you say we have to improve ourselves in the yes. of communication. Yes. And you're talking about the uh ghetto dictionary or sorry and, and learn some new words or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a, a other side to that also because yes. I've heard these preachers come in and every other word is a twenty level word mm -hmm. and they and just articulating and all this and then you say, Well hold on, wait a minute. What do that word mean? Right. They can't tell you what the word means. <laughs> they should have never said it. <laughs> exactly. So that 
you shouldn't be speaking what you don't know. Right. So what I've always um, thought myself to communicate was, hey, keep it simple. Yes. Keep it the basic words that yes. everyone may or should know right. the meaning to. Right. You know, right. not pull out this big word and, and they're looking at you like, Okay, I heard when you said duh and it, but what was that word? In the <laughs> right, right. You know, so I just right. think, hey, keep it simple. People might yeah. say from the up, those who think they're up here. Right. Oh, yeah, his vocabulary is not he just No, I'm speaking to them so they can understand That's what right. I'm saying. That's right. And you that know, makes sense. It don't make no difference. It don't make any sense if you speak to them on a, I have a two master degree no, right. vocabulary. Right. And, and they, they never even finished yeah, high school. Right. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. like you say, that. I would talk and yes. nothing would accomplish. Right, right. And so that those are things. That's why we, we're talking about having communicate, communication skills because that being able to, to as the scripture tells us, be all things to all men. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So understanding your audience in speech class, you know what I'm saying? If you ever take a speech class in college, that's the first thing they teach you is to know your audience. I believe Pastor Jackson said the same thing. You do have to know your audience. There are certain things that I can say, even in preaching or whatever, if I'm going to <coughs> one type of audience. You know what I'm saying? If I'm talking to folks who's just straight from the street and they're not looking for no chaser, they're not, I can just... Right. You know what I'm saying? But other people who may not be accustomed to that, so okay, I need to know how to carry myself, right. even in the midst of them. You know what I'm saying? As well. The purpose of us being able to improve our vocabulary is so that no matter who we're talking to, we have the ability to carry on conversation right. and be articulate in whatever aspect of our conversations that we might be having with them. Okay? All right, so let's talk about tone, having the appropriate tone. Okay, just as important as what we say is how we say it. The tone we use may cause our message to get discarded as unimportant, may make enemies or friends, or cause substantial injury to others. Okay, now, inappropriate tone usually results from a fel- from our failure to consider how it will sound to the reader or hearer. Okay, number one, words that are arbitrary. We do not see fit to change the procedure as you propose. This is um, when you're speaking in an arbitrary tone, okay? Can you um, elaborate on that? Yes. So in other words, if something is arbitrary, it's, it's not something that's thought out. It's, okay. you know, um, like they're saying here, we do not see the fit to change the procedure as you propose. You're not taking the time to take in what's being said to evaluate okay. it. It's it's a it's a it's something that you say without evaluating it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like first thing come to your mind, that's what you say. That's arbitrary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something that just popped in your head. Huh? I have a perfect example. Oh go ahead. Uh, some years ago, uh, my daughter and her friends were going out. They always hung out in the street. And so I said to them, oh, are you girls going street whoring again? Oh, no. <laughs> no, she did not. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to look behind <laughs> Okay. I didn't okay. give the disclaimer. That's another New Yorker. <laughs> oh, my oh, okay. Lord. Okay. And was absolutely insulted by that. Mm. Not knowing me. Gotcha. The the um the the person giving the message the messenger. Mm-hmm. So for nine years wow. she thought that I didn't like her. Wow. wow. And so finally, you know, we had a chance to talk about it. and I said to her, I said, I meant no harm by that. Mm. I said as um I said as I was coming up, my mother used to say that to me and my girlfriend because we were always running the streets, but she knew we weren't losing right. So that's why she used that terminology, but the reality was to her, her perception was I was calling her a street whore. Yeah. My lord. <laughs> and I wasn't even, you know, you know, that she was loose. Nine years she carried that. Nine years. That's a oh, long yeah, time. Yeah. That's a long time. Somebody that could have been reached and they had absolutely no idea that you were just joking. You were just, you know what I'm saying? You know, 
So that I don't know if that would be arbitrary. I think that one might be falling under. That might fall under the next heading, which is tactless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could combine the two. Huh? Yeah, you could combine the two. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. She was saying she didn't take no thought oh, right. on how yeah. how that would affect her. Uh, yeah. Amen. Now that's yes. a good definition. Ask her daughter. You know, your mom always talked like that. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? When you in moments like that, did try to explain it to her. Oh, uh -huh. okay. She was already. Offended by it. Yeah, oh, wow. And and we know when people get offended, yeah, you don't even talk it's about so hard. Mm -hmm. And the Bible even tells us that a brother that's offended is harder yeah. to win than a defense wow. city. Wow. He put the gates up, he wow. put the walls up, wow. like what Apostle was saying. So that's really serious. Okay. That's okay. really serious. Okay. okay, let's move to the next one. Tactless. Mm -hmm. Your statement about the treatment you receive from one of our employees is indeed surprising because we instruct all our employees to be civil, kindly, and thoughtful, even under the most trying circumstances. So they're, they're having to fix something that has been said because it was tactless. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because it didn't take into account how someone would receive it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, or even being indifferent. Okay. Mm. When you are indifferent, you're not expect you're not accepting responsibility for anything. Right. You ever try to talk to somebody and really they're supposed to apologize and they really just not. I give you case in point. If anybody saw the CNN interview with um, Dennis Rodman, oh, God. okay, he made a statement about the man who was being held prisoner over in um, North Korea, and so the uh, Cuomo or whatever his name is that was. Uh, interviewing him, asked him, he says, well, are you are you willing to issue an apology? Are you apologetic to the family? He was like, well, um, um, you know, I don't have no problem with them. I, I don't know what the problem is. I don't know why they would even be offended. I wasn't trying to offend anybody. No, that wasn't the question. You were refusing to accept responsibility of things that you said with your mouth. You know what I'm saying? You, first of all, you involved with a communist leader, dictator. You know, you had no business over there. Getting involved in matters of state, you know, and making comments about stuff that carry weight. You know what I'm saying? And so when you're indifferent, you're not accepting responsibility. You, okay. you just push responsibility off. Mm. Okay? Grudging. We already know what holding grudges is. Mm -hmm. Meaning we're going we're gonna to keep account yeah. of what somebody does. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to forgive. Mm -hmm. And anytime they do one thing, we're going to come back to that list. Wow. Okay? Flatly contradictory, mm -hmm. meaning somebody will just say the complete opposite of what has been said. Now, you know I ain't say that to you, Brother Paul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why are you trying to say that I said the sky was purple? I never said the sky was purple. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. I know I heard those words purple come out of your mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Insulting. Mm. Being mindful that sometimes our tone of voice can be insulted. Mm. Like what Apostle Jackson was saying. She was the lady was the girl was insulted yeah. by the comment that was made. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes this is not our intention. We're not trying to insult people, but it happens. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some of us have a, a different type of sense of humor and everybody can't stomach it. That's good. You know, so we have to be <laughs> mindful of that. Count of money. Okay. Bossy. Okay. You in control. Or you trying to take control when it's not your turn to be in control or something like that. Trying to tell everybody what to do. Okay. Here's the bossy tone. You are to keep your social security card with you. You should write or call at call at that office as we instructed you in the letter on August 24th. I'm just telling you what to do. That's good. Okay. Guilty. <laughs> Amen. Deliverance at the round table. Come on, <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right. Impertinent. Yes. Okay. Do you actually mean what you state in your last sentence? In other words, you're trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. That's that's our word in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. You're trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. Impertinent. That's um. That's not what you meant, was it? Mm -hmm. Like you really didn't mean for me to clean the refrigerator out when you say clean the refrigerator out. Mm -hmm. Well, duh, Becky. Of course, that's what I meant. <laughs> right. So we tried it. We, you know, how we say we tried it. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Okay, the next one is weak and apologetic. 
Okay, sometimes you can be apologetic without being weak about it. Mm. And you don't have to be overly apologetic. Okay. That's usually a sign of insecurity wow. and being unsure of yourself. When everything is, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You cannot do that, mm. especially if you're supposed to be, you know, leading. You know what I'm saying? You can be apologetic, but one apology is enough. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If if it calls for it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Research tells us that as much as 98% of all communication is nonverbal. It supports the old saying, it matters more what you do than what you say. Even if your verbal message is positive and supportive, it becomes lost if our nonverbal communication does not agree. See? Because you can say yes. I love you. Major. Major. That's major. Yes. yes. Okay? Yes. All right. So here go here are some three the three major areas of nonverbal communication. I'm giving you the technical terms. Proxemics, proxemics, or social and personal space. It is feature fixed space, semi feature fixed space, and informal space. Um, whose phone is this? That's mine. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have things that take place in your in a, in your social space, in your personal space. Okay. Um, something that has that takes place during certain events. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then something that takes place was just you. It's not social. This is just you and another person. Mm -hmm. It's face to face. It's right. it's you know intimate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So vocal characteristics or paralinguistics. Your pitch, your volume, the rate at which you speak. Some of us who speak fast sometimes mm -hmm. have to slow down. Help me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Laughing. When somebody is laughing when you're talking to them about something serious, that's rude. Mm. That means, <laughs> I mean, you know mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you're tending to communicate with them that you're not taking seriously what's being said. Wow. Coughing, even like inappropriately. This is about stuff that's inappropriate mm -hmm. during communication. You know, like you just, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sighing. We talked about sighing. Silent pauses. This is passive aggressive stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We're talking and you stop midstream in the middle of your conversation. Oh, you showing your passive aggressive behavior. Oh. So you're really telling me you really don't care. You're trying to get under my skin by taking a pause in the middle of our conversation. These are things that we do when we communicate. Mm. Can you give me an example of that? Can y'all uh, somebody demonstrate that? If you can. Oh, yeah, I'm sure okay. I could. <laughs> I, I'm sure I could. Um, talk to me about not washing the dishes. Why are the dishes not washed today? That's um, right. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's it. Okay, I wanted to say, okay. I'm not saying nothing. Okay. Would you care to explain why? Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotcha. just don't care how the dishes ain't washed out. That's, the, you get that's <laughs> yeah, the idea that's conveyed. Oh, that's the idea that's conveyed because I did not, I did not grace you or acknowledge, uh, acknowledge the complaint that was and given. And that's how the conversation goes. <laughs> and, just, and then before you know it, and then next thing you know, we're back at First Timothy chapter two mm. verse eight. We're back at with the with the arguing and the and the grudging and we're back at the you know anger mm -hmm. okay hesitations that's what that is hesitation mm -hmm. silent pauses what well, uh, never mind mm -hmm. oh that's it oh, okay. <laughs> i'm really ready for you Did not, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. that and is communication okay. <laughs> right right <laughs> right Wrap it up. Right. <laughs> all, all of that. that. <laughs> all of okay. that. Okay. Okay. Your tone of voice. Mm. Tone of voice. How we say it. Mm. The tone that was. Ooh. Is it an angry tone? Is it a happy tone? Is it an argumentative tone? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is it sarcastic? 
You know what I'm saying? Our tone of voice means something. And and the diction that you use, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's how you say what you say. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, you know what? I'm forget you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How I put my words together? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Even just jumbling my words together, you understand that I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. You understand that even though I have not communicated a full thought, you fully understand mm -hmm. that there's frustration going mm -hmm. on here. You know what I'm saying? So even how we do that, all of that needs to be taken into uh, consideration. Okay? Um, kinesics or body language, your position, your movement, your stance agreement, how you stand. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking, your eye contact or touching. You know what I'm saying? This is usually when a doctor walks in the room. Hello, how are you doing today, Miss Hannah? You know what I'm saying? That's, you know what I'm saying? I'm touching her, you know. But if I'm like, girl. <laughs> you're in my space. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So then.